come back to my page you know there's this video i saw trending on social media about jasmine jasmine i don't know if you uh, remember uh miss Dibu's adopted daughter you know about all the dramas going on in her name for all this while some people said she is having something with the father which is miss Dibu, and uh, the wives have been accusing her wrongly for what we heard so right now she have decided to speak concerning how she even got involved into the family of a uh, Mr. Ibu and how everything happened. Just be patient and watch the video till the end. You are going to hear everything for yourself. For those of you who are still judging her, at least after watching this video, you will know what to say again, okay? And please don't forget to share this video. Don't forget to share. I love you, okay? For those of you who doesn't know me very well, I am Dochi Williams. You can call me Dochi or Dilolo. So continue watching the video. I'm sure you will like it how things got to this point and i'm not talking because i need people to sympathize with me no that's not the essence of this i'm talking because i feel like i have been abused i have been used and i hope you guys are patient enough to at least listen to the entire story because it means a lot to me for people to know what really transpired, what really happened. Then if after listening to me, you feel like, oh, I'm wrong. Fine. I'll, let, I'll leave the judgment to you people. So how did I get involved in all this in the first place? Um, firstly, how did I get involved with this family? Who is opening the John Okafor family, Mr. Ibu family. The first and most important question I get all the time from people, mostly in my comment section, is, oh, don't she have a family? Don't she have parents? Uh, leave this family alone? And all of that. I would like to start addressing from those kind of comments. So many years ago, my dad passed on me, so rest in peace. He was a Nigerian army. He was a very good friend to Mr. Ibu who is now a father figure in my life. When my dad passed on, Mr. Ibu himself was at the barrier. Ever since then, he has played the role of a father figure in my life. Not for once have I ever needed somebody as a father that he was not there for me. So, fast forward to 2018, I left the country I left Nigeria and then I went to look for greener pasture outside the country. Things were working out for me. I was doing good. I was doing fine. Later on, I relocated to Cyprus where I was studying law. Fast forward to 2020, Daddy started, Daddy, in person of Mr. Ibo, started writing me on WhatsApp requesting for financial assistance. I was really surprised because before I left this country, he was doing well. If not, if he wasn't at the peak of his career, he was doing absolutely well. He has exotic cars. Everything was okay for him. So in 2020, when he started reaching out to me that he needed money for certain things, I was really surprised. Certain times I would send 50000 5000 2000 as much as I can. I have friends then in Cyprus that can attest to it. I think I have one friend, Ventura, another friend, Otonye. These are people I know that can attest to it because then, even when I don't have as much, I would borrow from them or I would get from them to send to him. So at some point, it was getting, it was quite disturbing because I know when I left this country, he was doing very, very okay. I started asking questions. I asked him what exactly is happening in your life right now for you to be asking for the least 50,000, 10,000, 5,000. Are you sure everything is okay? That was the first time he mentioned to me that he was sick and he was in Abuja. I then asked him, how about your wife? How is the children? How is everybody doing? It's been long since I heard from any of them. He said uh, his, wife is in, um, his wife is in Lagos. 
that he has been in Abuja for close to two years now. And I was like, if you're sick, the best place to be is your home in Lagos. Why Abuja? He didn't really say much. So I told him to send me his wife number that I would like to hear from her. It's been a while. I'd like to hear from her. Let me know what's happening in, in their life and all of that. Let me also understand why he was asking for those kind of financial help if things has really gotten that bad. Because it's, I was in shock. It also surprised me. So he later sent her number. I called her. I asked her how she was doing. She said everything was not well. I could remember that day. She, the first day I contacted her after a very long time, she said everything is not well, that her husband has left the house for over two years, he has abandoned the children and everything. I was surprised to hear that from her. And then she said that that, that very day, she started sending me videos. I think the last time they called me out that I was on, um, that the freeze life, I made reference to that. And I'm sure those evidence will still be on the live because I've changed my phone several and my phone formatted. So I might not have some of those evidence. But I still know that if I go to my iCloud, I will still see some of them, which I'll be posting while the, the live, the video goes on. So around that period, she was crying over the phone when I asked her how things were going. She said... Um, that daddy in person of Mr. Igbo has left the house for over two years, abandoned her with the kids, that things were really bad for her. Even that day, she sent me a video of um, Nepal people cutting the light as of when I called her. The Nepal people were there. She went to her car. She showed me her car, that there was no fuel in her car. Her car was in a very bad condition. That in fact, that if I don't intervene, no, 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 no. The Nepal people will cut the light and there will be no light for the house. Uh, uh, there will be no light in the house. And the children were drinking Gary. That there was no food in the house for the children, that they were drinking Gary, that things has caused real bad. That since that he was in Abuja, he was not really in a very good state to help them and support her and for her she's not doing any work she, she according to her she, she married him she has not had, had any job she has not done anything she has no means of sustaining the family i mean she totally depends on him to be able to sustain the family and pay school fees for the children so i said okay ah me i'm in cyprus though. i'm studying I showed her some of my school stuff. I'm studying law. This is where I am. We're trying to catch up with each other. And I told her, this is where I am right now. But I'll try and see if I can raise at least 100000 and send to her so that she can sort out the little she can solve. She said, okay, that day I sent her 100000 the proof of that is what the proof of that 100000 I sent her is in the live video, I, the previous live video I did with Daddy Freeze. I sent her 100,000 naira. She called me, she thanked me, she said that 100,000 will go a very long way for her. I said, okay, subsequently I will keep in touch. That was my first encounter with her after a very long period of time. But that was my first time talking to her after a very long period of time, after like after I left the country and everything. So from there, she started chatting me every day. We were, we were talking. Subsequently, she would send me for every single time we we're having conversation it was about the issues in the house and all of those things and, and at the point started complaining to me that she's not able to reach daddy on the phone in person of mr evil and when she calls him in abuja he doesn't pick and all of that so she asked me to call daddy on her behalf and talk to daddy that daddy should um send something for her and the kids and i've been supporting her in the little way i can during that period my friends in cyprus i have i can i can call their names here i'm sure they most of them are still alive life although i'm not in contact with some of them because i've left cyprus for a while they they are aware some of them are aware because when i don't have i'll ask my friend oh please help me i want to send they know they know how close i was to the family and how i have I, how i was always concerned about the family so at one point i said i was coming back to nigeria because at that point i was um dating someone and we're talking about getting married so i had a reason to come to nigeria and i told her, i said look i'm coming to nigeria when i come to nigeria we we'll sit down and talk then we'll know how to solve some of all these issues that is going on you know so i was also talking to daddy's son valentine that was in south africa i was talking to so many people in the family that that period so when i came back to Nigeria. I was supposed to come to Lagos. In fact, she was supposed to meet me at the airport, but she couldn't meet up. And then I told her I was going straight to Abuja. I traveled with one other lady, one of their family friends. So we went to Abuja. On getting to Abuja, Daddy was really sick. 
he was really really sick that was the first video that went viral on social media that was giving me medicine i said daddy take this medicine take the medicine i am sure i'll put it on the screen during the course of the video so daddy was really sick the condition i met him was really bad i have a lot of videos we made that day asking what was happening he said he's really down for the past two years he don't know what is happening i said why haven't you gone home if things are really that bad Go home and stay with your wife. At least she will take care of you. Now that you are here in this hotel, the name of the hotel you was then was Nana Suit. People can go and find out how how long that he stayed in Nana Suit. I know I heard when I came, I heard he lived in so many hotels in Abuja before finally living in Nana Suit. I'm sure people people that are watching this video, some people will be able to go there and make inquiries. It was in Nana Suit Hotel that I went and found that day. So in that Nana Suit Hotel, there are some other people that were there, some other actors. During the course of this video, I'll be mentioning some names. So if, if there's anything I'm saying that is lie, people can go and make inquiries. You know, I didn't want to come and say anything, but I've, it's, it, the things, things have gotten to the part where I have to speak up and I have to speak up my truth. I have to say my truth the way it is. That is the essence of telling this story. The way it is, if after knowing my truth, you people still deem it fit to condemn me, it's fine. But at least let it be that I, sp I speak let it be that I said something. Let it be that I stood up for myself. So, when I arrived at that Nana Hotel with that, with this the lady, that is a family friend to to them, that he was really sick. Then I did a video of him being sick, and I put it on social media. That video caught the attentions of, of so many good Nigerians. And then people started reaching out. I, I was happening to Mr. Ebu. It's been so long we heard about Mr. Ebu. What's happening to all our own old our, our old Hollywood actors? We haven't been seeing Mr. Ebu. Nobody has been hearing about him for a while now. And there were some good people that were around him around that period. They knew he was sick, but they did not know he was that bad. Benedict Johnson, an Hollywood actor, was there. La Bista was there. There's one other man. I don't really know him mutually, but I met him there. It was one of the people that was helping him then, and Bala, Mr. Bala. They had a program running, one, one a political party program that was running on that period. I can't really say much about it because I came and met, met them in the middle of it. In fact, I later found out that they were the one even sustaining his hotel bill, his food and everything. So when they saw that video, they rushed, they came, and Eddie Johnson came over, La Bista came over, and some, some people in Nollywood, they came over, and immediately, it wasn't up to an hour let me say an hour 30 minutes they rushed him to the hospital they rushed him to the hospital zenith uh, medical zenith kenya medical center when they took him to the hospital i believe ben benedict johnson by the grace of god he's alive and healthy he knows most of he will he, he should be able to relate to most of the things i'm going to say during this period in abuja they took him to the hospital the doctor saw that they they saw his former medical reports from the previous hospital he was and they, they, what the doctor said that day i won't forget he said if this medical report that they came with is the state of him of daddy right now that i mean things are really bad and then i can remember then the, if the people that were there can attest to the father that he was saying that is near that is near that is near i was rebuking him i said that is not near you're not dying you're not dying anytime soon so the hospital they started they said they had to make a deposit of a particular amount of money. Benedict Johnson and Labista ran, were running around with some other people, the Bala man, they were running around, they were able to raise a certain amount of money and then they made deposit at that hospital, Zenith Hospital. So they started checking that I cannot actually give details of his medical condition because I feel like that those are things that are actually personal to him. But I can actually he said to some extent the medical the medical condition was really bad it wasn't a very good report so they started checking him all over they had to admit him they admitted him in the hospital for at least three months and the people that took care of the bill that time as far as i know was that um, group of people that were sustaining him at that um, hotel so when i came the first thing i asked i called the wife i said look i'm here at the hospital in abuja the condition is really bad if it's possible for you to come, come. She now said ah, that she doesn't have transport or that she doesn't have money for flight. She can't come. That they said we're going to arrange money for her to come and all of that. I said, okay. So I spoke to daddy. I said, we need to find a way for your wife to come so that she can actually take care of you. 
Daddy said clearly to me that day that he doesn't want his wife to come to the hospital that day. That if his wife comes, he's going to die. I'm not the only one he said that to. Labista, you're still alive. Energy Johnson, you're still alive. If you people know the truth and you want to be silent about it because you don't want to get involved in family issues, I can understand. But I know very well that you people know what happened that day at that hospital. We pleaded with daddy, pleaded with daddy, pleaded with him for him to allow his wife to come to the hospital. He said no. And he gave his reasons. He gave his reasons. He made some, some very strong allegations about their marriage, about have him um, catching a, about um having caught his wife having affairs so many times and all of that which i called the wife i told him i said this is what daddy said this is what he said he doesn't want you to come that he caught you having an affair and all of those things she said oh that about that that is not true that she never had any affair i'm not here to say whether she had affair or she never had affair because i wasn't there but i'm quoting what daddy said that day the main reason why he said he didn't want her to come to abuja he said he didn't want her to come, that for the past two years he hasn't seen her. And she affirmed to me that for the past two years she has not seen him. They were only talking on the phone and most of the times he doesn't pick the call. That most of the time he's strangers, people that she, she doesn't know that were picking the call. So that didn't want her to be there. I was the one pushing for her to come there. I was the one pushing for her. I told her, okay, come. This is the hospital. She asked me where the hospital address was. I said, come. And I told her, okay, you know what you're going to do? Find a way. Source that they will find flight ticket and come. When you come, then we can now um, find a way and raise the money and balance you back. Because if that is giving his reason, saying this is the reason why he doesn't want you to come, I cannot go against that will. So finally... The wife uh, actually talked about that issue. She said, she herself said that Daddy has been telling a lot of people that she has had it from so many places that she's having an affair. But in reality, that it were just mere accusations, that it was hearsay. He was hearing from a lot of people that she never had any affair. I believed whatever she said that period. I believed her. I had no, I had no reason to doubt what she was saying. So I just, I just, as an adult, I felt like, oh, maybe it's just normal misunderstanding between uh, husband and wife that they were in turn settled later. So later on, she came to the hospital. When she came to the hospital, the first thing that they asked me was, ah, who brought her here? I said, that this person is your wife. No, you cannot be asking me who brought her here. Then she later said, um, her friend, one of her friends, which I'll be mentioning her name in the course of this um, video, because a lot of things that happened in that family, she knows. If she's willing to come out and speak up one day, it's on her. If she wants to know the truth and still be silenced about the truth, it's still on her. I will not force anybody to come and speak up or force anybody to come and stand up for me. I won't, that's what I won't do. So that her friend, now she according to the wife, when she landed in Abuja after I sent the address, she said it was that her friend Ogadima that actually booked the flight ticket for her. And then she came there. There was one other lady that was there that they later had issue with whatever, I don't know. They later had issue with the lady that was there in the hospital. So when she came to the hospital, it was me, the other lady that she later had issue with, and daddy at first in the hospital. Before she came, I was the one in the hospital taking care of daddy when I came back. Then subsequently, Labista will come, Benedi Justin will come. Some people were coming, some other people from Nollywood, and some people that were there in that hotel that he was lodged at. The people that were looking after him were, were, were paying for his food and his hotel bill. Those people were also frequenting the hospital before she came. So when she came, I stepped down. I was just there. Whatever she wants, she would send me a message like her daughter. She was even calling me her daughter, introducing me. She was the one that started introducing me to people as her daughter. Oh, this is my daughter. This is what she has done and all of that. I was working with the flow. I never had issue with her at any point. I was very loyal to her. Never at any point had any issue with her. So, Daddy was not in that hospital for about two weeks. Then his son, his son later came and joined us. Um, Daniel, his son, his second son, sorry, not the one in South Africa, his second son later came and joined us in the hospital. So it was me, daddy, his wife, his son at the, at, at the hospital. Um, subsequently, people started coming to the hospital to visit him. As yes, Madam Mona Lisa came to visit him in Hollywood address, she was the then secretary of AGN. A lot of people came, started coming to the hospital to visit him after the, the post I made went viral. Some people were contributing directly to him. Some people were giving him cash directly to him. At no situation was any money that was given to him, taken by me or given to me. They were giving it to him, either him directly or the wife. I was just there in the picture trying to assist with everything. So after staying in that hospital for months, 
Daddy finally recovered. Glory be to God. Myself, his son, the wife, we, we now started traveling. I cannot remember the sequence of the travel, but I know we went to Abu, um, sorry, we went to, yes, from Abuja, we went to Enugu together. We went to Kalaba together to see that her friend that booked ticket for her, Auntie Ogadima. We went to Owere together. We attended we with our Dominic's wedding together, which he introduced me to so many people as his daughter, and the wife was introducing me to so many people as her child. We were traveling together. After all those travel, we now later came back to Lagos. When we came back to Lagos, we didn't go to the house directly because the wife said the house was not in a good condition. Water was already entering the house. She said the house was so messed. So we all went to lodge in a hotel. Went to lodge in a hotel. In that hotel, Daddy and his wife were lodged. I was lodged separately. After staying in that hotel for a particular period of time, I think for a week, then we now went to the house. Now, when we went to the house, around that period, that he was still, he, he just barely recovered. He was still trying to get back to his feet. When we were leaving, I think, um, and Eddie Johnson and Balad, his group, yes, but Eddie Johnson and Balad and Labista, their group, in that um, particular thing they were doing that time, I think it was something related to politics. I, I wasn't w really well informed about whatever they were doing, but they supported him with some amount of money. Even the day they wanted to give him the money, the wife said they should hand over the money to her. We did this, so she was the one in charge of the money they gave. They gave to him. After that, we went to from the hotel. We went to his house. So when we go to the house, I told them I wanted to. Then I just came back to Nigeria. I haven't actually connected to my own mom that was, I haven't even visited my mom. My mom was in Lagos. She was calling me. I told her the situation of things when I came because she knows him very well. And they thought my mom is also from Enugu. They are from a very close place. So she knows him very well. She knows him for years. She, they are, in fact, they are very close. So my mom was also communicating. My mom said, okay, be patient. When it's fine, you can come back. So for that period of time, my, my parents, my family are there. They were doing fine. They were communicating with me. And I had just recently got married. I had just recently got married to my to the American the guy I met on TikTok, the American guy. I'll be talking about his story in another video. That's another because when everything happened, I never ever said anything about anything. But now people are pushing me to talk. I've been quiet and people are pushing me to talk. They want me to really talk. I'm the kind of person that when things happen, I like things to be where they are. I like to move on from things. But this situation, I don't see myself moving on from it until I talk about it. And I'm, by talking about it, I mean telling my story exactly the way it is. And if I see anything on this video, anybody thinks that what I'm saying is a lie, I have proof of everything I'm going to say in this video. I have proof of them, either in video forms, either in picture forms, sc screenshot, chat. I have proof. I'm, I'm someone that is very detailed in whatever I do in life. So I have proof of whatever I'm going to be saying in this video. So around that period while we were in there in the house, my then her husband, who is now my ex-husband, said he wanted to come to Nigeria and that would have been the first that would have been like the first time he is coming to Nigeria. I said okay I had to go and rent house then. So I went to rent a house in Lagos. I took a five bedroom flat in Lekki. Before I left Cyprus, most people that knew me in Cyprus know that I had a logistic business working for me. Two four seven logistic years. I had a logistic business working for me. I had things working for me very fine. And I was doing very okay. And I was very comfortable. Very, very comfortable. The logistic business I was doing, I was making over 3 million naira weekly. So I was making a whole lot of money from that logistic. I was the only one doing the business I was doing in Cyprus. As of the time I left Cyprus, nobody else was doing that business. So when I came, I was okay. I was fully loaded. Then... After staying with Daddy in the house for a period of time, when Daddy was recuperating, him and his wife started had the, having issues. The son was there. The son can attest to it. Even the children, the younger children, they can attest to it. They were always constantly having issues. And the issues they were having was more far-fetched from money issues. The fact that she would want to do something and she would come and ask daddy for money, knowing fully well that he's not working and there's no other source of income, that he start complaining, okay, I'm not working, where do you want this money to come from? And as far as I know, from what both of them told me, from what daddy told me and from what she told me, they were married for years and that marriage was very okay. 
until that is started encountering money issues when he wasn't getting jobs in his career you know, um, the the acting team was not paying him he wasn't getting jobs he wasn't getting endorsements so he was just there so the money was not coming forth because while she was in that marriage, she was not working. So the only source of income in that marriage was daddy. And at the point that daddy was not was not able to financially sustain the marriage, that's when the issues started coming up. So when I was there, the few issues that I know occurred in my presence, I uh, the, the few issues that I can I can say I can attest to that happened in my presence were mostly the issues of money. And she would say, okay, I need money for this. I mean, me only for that. At some point, daddy was even telling her to, that the school fees they were paying for the, the kids were too expensive that um, they should actually change the school for the children so that he can pay in somewhere that he can afford. You know, those were the kind of issues that were causing, the, cause, bringing problems that time. And the problem I was, the, 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 the problem I'm talking about is not like just that uh, they were having, they were always, 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 quarreling in, in the loudest of their voice i've never witnessed daddy hitting her or with a witness has beaten daddy but they were always fighting at the at the top of their voice that daddy would at some point he would start complaining oh my heart my chest and all of those things he would start complaining as if those things were actually affecting him directly so then aside from that job i did in, in cyprus i was doing tiktok even when i traveled to gambia and some other african countries i was doing tiktok and then people that knows what tiktok is all about knows that tiktok is one social media platform that pays very well if you're very creative and you know what you're doing if you go on tiktok like you have a lot of people gifting you and all of that so i started telling her i said okay now that daddy is not working uh, this TikTok thing, I showed her how I was making my income and all, all of that. I said, this TikTok thing might actually be something that would work for you people. She said, okay, she's very interested that I should create a, an account for her. I should teach her how she can do the TikTok thing, which I, I did. I politely did. I opened a TikTok account for her. I even went as far as growing her TikTok account to 114,000 followers that it is today. I was doing content for her. Even while we in Abuja, I was doing content for her. I was shooting the videos. Everything on that TikTok platform till it grew to that amount of followers it has was all my doings. Then later on, I started doing daddy TikTok. She said I should also help daddy bring daddy back to social media that people don't know uh, that daddy has gone out of the line. Like maybe he can start having a job. That is how I started creating content with daddy, bringing him back to the limelight so that he can at least afford the least school fees. And I, as I speak, I know there are so many people in the industry that can attest to the fact that I was not the only one that he was calling and asking for finance. Because when I came, I heard a lot of stuff. A lot of people were telling me that he was asking for finance for as many people as possible. People, everybody knew that the time I came back to Nigeria, that he was at his lowest. He was at his lowest. He was asking for the least 2,000 naira from anybody that cared to sustain his family. He was asking for the least 1,000 naira. He was asking for money from anybody, be it a stranger, anybody. So a lot of people knew that. I was not the only person that knows that daddy was at his lowest when I came back to Nigeria. That daddy wasn't doing fine at all financially. So that was how I was able to set up the TikTok thing for both her and, and daddy. And when I came back, daddy's um, Instagram account was hacked. His account was hacked. He was not active on Instagram. In fact, his account was hacked while he was in the hospital. And we later find out who hacked his account. It's also somebody in the Nollywood. I don't want to mention him because the case was taken to... Um, I'm sorry, the case was taken to Aja Police Station. I was the one that found out because I was chatting the account and then the person was chatting me. He sent details to send money. I later found out who the person was. I was the one that reported the case to Aja Police Station, paid for every day, investigation to go on. And when the investigation go, uh, went on, they tracked the person and they brought the person to 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 Aja Police Station for me to recover that account. There's this girl called Jenna, Jenna of Insta and Jenna on Instagram. So I paid Jenna 500000 on Instagram to help recover that is account. Now they recovered that is account, an Instagram, a Instagram account. After they recovered the Instagram account, which before I paid that money, I told the wife, I said, okay, see, 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 how are we going to raise the money? She was like, mm, let's forget about the account, that um, it's something we can always do, that that money is not important to pay that kind of money. And I can remember that I called my immediate younger brother, I said, please, can you loan me 500000 
the next day i'll be able to send it to you let me just quickly solve this problem out he did i show she was there when the money came and everything and we solved that problem and when the guy was arrested he later compensated daddy with i think one point something million uh, yes, and that money was given to him and not me and i, I didn't bother so subsequently while i was doing my tiktok thing i was